Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala ba' We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts our salat, our zakat, our fasting, all of our acts of ibadah to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Ikhlas, with thabat. Ikhlas, who knows what ikhlas means? It means being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, it is in referred, it's in reference to keeping all of your ibadah, all of your worship, directed to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, ikhlas. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for thabat. Thabat means to be firm. What do we want to be firm on? What, so if we worship Allah alone, of course that is alim. That's the greatest thing you could do. But we want to have thabat. We want to be firm on what? On following who? And following what? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want to pro follow his sunnah. Jazakallah khairan. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us in that and forgive us of our sins and bless us with tawfiq and khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kareem, wa ma khalaqtu al jinn wa lintil al abudun. I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Why? Why did Allah create us? To worship Him. To worship Him and Him alone. So that means the way we spend our time, what we should strive to do in this life is do those things which please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we do things, if we want to gain money, we want to gain whatever we want to gain in this society or in this life, we want to make sure that it's halal and that it will help us worship Allah. Help us in our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah gives you wealth, then you're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you spend it in halal. And you spend it on good, on doing sadaqah and those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. So since the divine purpose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for is to worship Him and Him alone. And that He doesn't need us, but we need Him. We need Allah. Allah does not need us. We need him to provide for us. We need him to give us air. We need him to give us uh, our wealth. Everything we need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way that we please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way in which we worship him, subhanahu, is by following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَعَطِيُوا رَسُولُ Follow... Uh, uh, Obey Allah and obey His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that means that we are obedient to the Quran. What we read in the Quran. That means you have to understand the Quran. You can't just memorize the Quran, but you need to understand what it means in the Quran. So that way you can be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa taala's commands, and you have to be obedient to who after that. Or along with that. The Prophet ﷺ. Is the Prophet ﷺ alive now? No. Alayhi salatu wasalam. He's in Jannah. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But. The Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We have to follow his sunnah. So after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We have to follow his way. His sunnah. His. Path. That means. How he. Uh, the statements that he said, it means the actions that he did, and it means those things in which he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, allowed to happen from his sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. The things that he allowed that were permissible in his presence, that he didn't say, no, you cannot do that. So those are all things that make up the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we have to follow them. We have to follow the way, the example of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why we pray like we do. We pray the way we do because we know the details of the Salat from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We know that from Hadith. That's why we need Quran and we need Sunnah. We need both. We need the Quran and the Sunnah because the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, it is what teaches us the meaning of the Quran. 
We know the Quran. We know the meaning of the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa aqimu salah. How do we know how to pray? It's not all in the Quran, the, the, all the, the actions and the numbers of salat and, 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 and the number of raka'at fi, fi salat. It's not in the Quran. But we know that from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's how we know. And that's why we have to have the Quran and, and the sunnah. And the sunnah of who? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Exactly. Jameel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa'budullah wa la tu shiriku bi shayin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And worship Allah alone and do not associate partners to him. Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him. Wa'budullah. So here Allah is commanding us to do what? Commanded us to do what? Wa'budullah. Worship me and work. Uh -huh. Jameel. So Allah is commanding us to worship Him and Him alone. And then He says, and then He's forbidding. MashaAllah. Jameel. And He's forbidding us from committing shirk. Wa'budullah. He's ordering us, commanding commanding us, worship Allah alone. Wala. La in Arabic means no. It, it's nafi. It negates things. Wala. And do not worship others besides Allah. Eh, that eh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to, to, to worship Him and not to worship anything. That means there are no ex uh, exceptions. We can't worship anyone or anything with Allah. We do not pray to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We do not pray to Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam. We do not pray to the angel Jibreel, alayhi salam. We do not pray to our ancestors, the people who died before us. And we do not pray to our mothers and our fathers, our grandparents, or the sheikhs, the dead sheikhs, the dead anyone. But we only pray to Allah. Nor do we pray or sacrifice for the jinn. Some people, they worship the jinn. Some people, they worship many gods, and, they, and they'll tell you, they'll say, I'm a Wiccan, or I'm a witch, and I worship these different gods over here. And some other people say, you know, I worship, uh, you know, of course, they say, you know, the Christians, generally, they worship Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, or they say Jesus is a son of God. But as a Muslim, we worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we do not associate any partners with Allah. So we don't say, I worship Allah and Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasalam. No. I worship Allah alone. I follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I follow his sunnah. I pray like him. I make hajj like him. I fast like him. I uh, do those actions which he prescribed sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That that's what we're ordered to do. So those two very important things that we have sincerity to Allah, meaning we worship Him and Him alone, and we follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And I want to end by one short hadith, inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was riding on a donkey. Did you know the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to ride on a donkey sometimes? And that shows you how humble he was. Because so many people now, they have to have the nicest car. Oh, so-and-so has a fresh Benz. He has a real nice, uh, you know, BMW. He has a real nice Lexus or whatever. Nice forerunner, jeep, like this and like that. But the Prophet ﷺ, who's the best of mankind, ﷺ, he rode on the donkey. And one day he was riding with Mu'adh ibn Jabal, who's one of the Sahaba, who was sent to Yemen. The Prophet ﷺ sent him to Yemen to give da'wah. Because at that time, back then, in those days, Yemen, the people of Yemen, they were mainly Jews and Christians at that time, during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Mu'adh was sent by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to go give them da'wah. But, and, and that, there's a hadith that follows that in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the first thing you should call them to is to worship Allah alone. He said, إِنَّ كَتَعْتِي كَوْمٍ مِنْ أَحْلِ كِتَابٍ فَلْيُكُنْ أَوَلَ مَا تَدْعُهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَدَةٍ لَا إِلَيْهِ اللَّهِ وَفِي رُوَايَةٍ وَأَنْ يُوَحِدَ اللَّهَ so he said that verily you're going to be sent. I'm sending you to a people who are the people of the book. Who are the people of the book? Do you know who when it says Ahl Kitab? 
in the Quran, like Surah Al-Bayna and all throughout the Quran. Ahl Kitab, do you know who that is? Ahl Kitab is the Jews and the Christians. They are the people of the book. That's how you translate it in English. The people of the book, meaning the Jews and Christians. They're Ahl Kitab, and we can eat their food if it's slaughtered properly in accordance with their rights, and they mention the name of Allah on it. That's why you can eat kosher hot dogs and things like this. Because they're from Ahl Kitab. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala was being sent to Ahl Kitab, to the Jews and Christians in Yemen. And the Prophet said, you're going to be sent to these people. So the first thing that you should call them to, to invite them to, is to worship Allah alone. Showing us the importance of Tawheed. That our da'wah, when we talk to people about Islam, is calling them back to worship Allah alone. And in fact, even the Muslims, our Muslim brothers and sisters, a lot of them require renewal and reaffirmation of their shahada because they don't always know what it means. A lot of people don't know what it means. They say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. They don't even know what it means. They don't even really know that uh, when you make the shahada, uh, you bear witness that there is only one God worthy of worship. There's no gods worthy of worship except the law. That means you're negating all false gods and you're affirming that you worship only Allah with no partners. A lot of people, they don't know that. A lot of Muslims don't know that. And they negate that because they, some of them, they even pray to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi They say, oh, Nabi Allah, please give my wife a child. Oh, Nabi Allah, please send my prayers to Allah. Oh, Nabi Allah, please uh, give us riz, provide for us. This is what they do. And they say the shahada. And they consider themselves Muslim. But that right there, that negates your Islam. And that's why we have to know what it means to worship Allah alone. And you have to know that some things can make a person not be a Muslim anymore. That it negates what they, what they believe. They say they're Muslim, but then they commit shirk that takes them out of the fold of Islam. Disbelief. They worship other than Allah. And that is, the one, that is, the major, that is one of the major sins. The biggest sin... It's a sin that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Why? Because Allah said in the Quran, قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرَ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لَمَنْ يَشَاءَ Verily Allah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِهِ Verily Allah does not forgive that you commit shirk with him. But he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. Meaning, if someone dies, and they die on shirk, the major shirk, then they die as a non-Muslim, and they will be in the hellfire forever. So that shows us we have to know what Tawheed means, what it means to have a class to worship Allah alone. We have to know about the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu because that's the way to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone. And we need to know about shirk, what takes us out of the fold of Islam, and kufr, those things which negate our Islam. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with Al Nafid or Skin Taiba, Taiba, Wa Amal Mutta Kabilin, Wa Sallallahu Wa Sallam, Ala Nabi and Muhammad, Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam.